Hi, I'm Beverly Banner of Brown. Have you ever wondered about the difference between codependency, interdependency, and dependency? Dependency can be, depending on the balance of it, a fairly healthy situation as long as you know that you can do without the person or the place or the situation, the job, the title, the money, whatever form it takes, and you can still live a satisfying, happy life. Codependency is a whole conundrum of different activities and coping mechanisms that many people use in order to get their needs met, in order to create a sense of well-being and safety. And interdependency is not addictive like codependency and dependency can be. Interdependency means that you have a healthy centeredness about you, a strong sense of who you are and what you're all about. And you know that you will be fine, whether you're in a partnership with other people in business or in your personal life or not whether you're living with someone else or you're living with yourself, because we're never really alone. We're always having ourselves, potentially our own best friend, with us 24-7. Interdependency means that you know pretty well how to get most of your own needs met by nurturing yourself. It also means that you have developed in yourself a very good set of communication skills so that you know how to attract people who are basically strong, healthy, interdependent beings themselves. You can ask for what you want, and here's the critically important point, whether you get it through the channel of that person or not, you're sure, you're confident that you will get the need met, the constructive desires will be fulfilled, and that the universe is basically a fairly safe or very safe, friendly place in which to exist. When you're codependent, you're usually suffering from some childhood traumas that have left you hypervigilant, hyper alert. You're often looking outside of yourself to satisfy those needs, those constructive wants and desires, although the constructive wants and desires are in the background primarily because you're still at the level most of the time of trying very hard, scrambling, so to speak, to get your basic needs for love, for approval, for companionship, uh, sometimes for money, sometimes for a beautiful home to live in or a career to advance that you really feel uh, needs to happen in order for you to feel okay. In an interdependent person, the okayness is much less dependent on the outer trappings because there's an inner strength, there's often an awareness of your interconnectedness with all of life that comes for some people through a spiritual awareness and connection. In the end, it's all about consciousness. So let me just share with you, I've been an in uh, an intuitive who does intuitive readings, psychic readings, uh, and I'm also a classically trained um, intuitive life and relationship coach and a love mentor, and I've been doing this work now for over 30 years. It's work that I cherish. I love every uh, session that I do because very often the people who I've worked with make these huge changes in how they view themselves and therefore, how do they view other people and relationship and what's possible? And the coping mechanisms that they've developed in early childhood because of some usually major fracturing of the stability of the family in which they grew up, these factors get healed. And they no longer have the need to look outside of themselves constantly to get their needs met by trying to change other people or cling to other people, places, situations. Perhaps that also can involve addictions to substances, cigarettes, alcohol, other drugs, 
or gambling, debting, uh, sexual addictions, relationship fixations and obsessions. Let me give you an example of someone I worked with many years ago and I was still practicing in New York City. This woman had been a remarkably successful individual in her chosen field and was very satisfied in many areas. In the area, however, that she wanted most, ironically, which was to meet a man with whom she could have an enduring relationship, with whom she could have a marriage, a uh, happily ever after kind of romantic story. In that area, she was incredibly frustrated drained and exhausted when she first started working with me. Why? Because for many, many years, there had been a pattern of her never being attracted sexually to those guys she'd find or who would find her, who were basically stable, who basically could be nurturing and loving and responsible, totally reliable. They had good jobs. They had a a deep sense of direction and purpose in their lives, and they were busy fulfilling it. And part of what they wanted to do was have that fulfillment personally by being her husband. She could never see them in that light. And the men who she would be attracted to would invariably, four or five times this would have happened, would be men who were in some sort of great jeopardy, some sort of problem was going on. Either it was a health issue or a business nightmare that would be going on and about to uh, create a situation of such indebtedness that the man didn't know how he would ever ex extricate himself. Sometimes it was single fathers who had children who were getting very involved in drugs and alcohol in wild behavior, who had been uh, thrown out of various schools. That would be a turn on for her, and she didn't understand why. The relationships would be one where she would go into what I call the knee jerk rescue mode, the rescue reflex, and she would set to being the savior in the family of the man or with him personally, whether again it was his health or his business, or a combination. She did not have any idea why this was the case, and so, of course, our work became to help her understand the codependency, what had caused it, what was perpetuating it, how she was experiencing life in such a way that she just could not allow herself to ever really relax into a relationship with someone where it could be mutually loving, mutually nurturing, and not involving constant struggle. When we did some work after a couple of sessions on all of this, what became obvious to me and then to her was that when she'd been being raised, her mother had gotten into a rather serious active alcohol addiction and her mother was incapable, most of the time, of putting a decent meal on the table. There were other children much younger than my client, and her mother had let her know that basically she regarded her as the eldest, as the child who was responsible for those kids. She wanted her to learn how to cook at a very early age, how to make the lunches and pack them for school in the lunch boxes, she expected her to uh, take care of dinner. And her father, for his part, had a very deep devotion to the mother, and yet he couldn't deal with her drinking. And instead of drinking himself, he felt he had some idea that if he had enough money and he could throw enough money at the situation and give the wife all the things that he knew she really would love to have, the material objects, that somehow magically she was going to stop all this drinking. This, of course, was a fallacy, and it led him to a lot of gambling. Horse races, casinos, 
You name it, if it was a gambling opportunity, he took it at every, every turn. So what this woman was seeing as a little child was a situation where she had to be the rescuer. Somebody had to prepare the food. Somebody had to prepare the food for her, and she was the only one capable of doing it, and somebody had to take care of her little brothers, and she was the only one, again, who was capable of doing it. Her mother would speak to her, cry to her, treat her in a way that indicated that she thought of her as being much older and mature than her years. So there was that process of kind of using her by the mother as a way to get her emotional needs met because she felt she couldn't speak to her husband who was then often unavailable and really didn't have very much emotional uh, wherewithal to offer in the first place. Can you see that in order to survive, in order to get her needs met and help to uh, save really the children and try to take care of her mother because when a child sees a mother or father or other close family member who they love and who they know are being actively self-destructive, though they don't have necessarily the uh, vocabulary yet to know what they're, to think about all of this, they know that for survival, they've got to do something to make the situation better. So in this woman's case, as a little girl, she sprang into action and learned how to cook. She sprang into action and learned how to make the beds and do the laundry and keep clean linens uh, and, and what have you and clothes on the kids' blacks and her own. She wound up cleaning up the house. She wound up basically acting like the mother instead of the daughter. This is often true in cases of codependency, having to grow up way too early and way too urgently. And so that was, we realized, the reason that she was unconsciously acting with that knee-jerk rescue reflex response to try and, in quotes, save these men. She also realized she was doing this a number of times in close friendships with women. She even started to recognize patterns of this behavior in her work life as well. Because codependency usually is not just limited to one aspect of life or another, it tends to bleed through into many, many different areas. So in order to get her needs met, she'd gotten the idea, which was causing a repetition compulsion, where she kept being attracted to these people she knew were not good for her consciously, yet she felt obligated, compelled, responsible to be involved with them, to be there for them, to help them every way, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, financially, personally, every, every way. Once she understood this and once we did a reparenting process to help heal the wounds that that little girl who lived and breathed and moved inside of her 24 hours a day, once we got her the new message and literally helped her through neuroplasticity to create new neural pathways by having the strong inner adult speak to her in her child, all the different ages, over time, she got better. And what happened then was that she was able to attract someone who was strong, stable, he had securely bonded with his own family. He had great relationships with everyone and was able to connect with her in a stable way. She was attracted to him on every level and they had the happy ending that she had always wanted. I'm Beverly Banor Brown. I hope you've enjoyed this and found it to be of help. And until next time, I'm wishing you love and I'm wishing you the centeredness that comes with knowing who you really are, and that you have a right to be happy. Bye for now, and many blessings.